Magic, the MLB playoffs presented by Ace Hardware Home Services. Ace, the helpful place, right? Now helpful in your home. All those jobs that you need, you got to check out acehardwarehomeservices.com. Heating, air conditioning, I know, I employ them. They are fantastic. You got to go to Ace, the helpful place. All right, uh, before we get into the MLB playoffs and the NLCS, the ALCS. Uh, yesterday, of course, uh, it was a big day for the Phillies. Dave Dombrowski and uh, Rob Thompson spoke uh, all about what's next for the Phillies. Thompson gets a uh, an extension. We knew that. And look, you, you, of course, you're going to give Rob Thompson an extension. Uh, you're not going to have a lame duck manager. There's no reason to change that piece of it. But what do you do? You heard the one interesting aspect that Dombrowski brought up was maybe moving Kyle Schwarber out of the leadoff spot to kind of lengthen the lineup a little bit. There's just so much you can do to reshape the lineup, right? Because you're locked into a lot of big contracts. So that may be one of the answers to do, to try to get them to be more uh, dangerous October. I know they talked about uh, a lot more rest to have them ready for October. But for me, it's about the approach, right? October is a different approach than the regular season. And that's where the Phillies, the last two years, got bit. They got bit in Arizona, pitch selection, right? You know, getting yourself out. You're not getting fastballs to hit. And I think that's where the adjustment really needs to make. It's got to be from the lineup. Uh, and maybe you do get uh, a more of a lead, traditional leadoff hitter, whether that's Turner, uh, who should be able to do it, who should bear down and be able to do that, that role, um, you know, or you go out and you, you make a couple trades and you kind of redo the outfield and that lengthens itself and you still roll with Schwarber at leadoff. But I think that's going to be the big deal this off season. All right. To talk about it, let's go to our man, uh, the analyst who's been with us throughout October. Uh, he is David Segui. David Segui, fresh mm -hmm. off the mountain. Yeah. Did you do the yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Morning, guys. So, I, before we get to the, any of the playoff stuff, a lot of talk was about, hey, you know, how do you fix this team? What do you do next year, right? They go to the World Series. Then they got, they got beat last year by Arizona and losing game six and seven at home because of the hitting issues. And then this thing happens. So now you got a, a veteran team, big payroll. What do you do, Seg? I think I just think they need a little more balance in their lineup. They're uh, a little bit of I see one dimensional, um, relying on the big, you know, crooked inning, the big, uh, the big hit, the home run, the home run. They're relying too much on that. Um, I just think they need a little more balance uh, at the top of the lineup. Some some guys that get on base, um, create. You know, create havoc on the base paths, um, put put these sluggers in better situations to hit where the pitcher can't kind of can't run from them or pitch around them, force them into uh, coming into the zone where these guys can do their damage. But uh, when you have a, a lineup that's you know heavy from top to bottom with uh, with leverage swings with with lift swings, when you run into a pitcher that that's executing his his game plan, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a frustrating day for those hitters. And you look at in the playoffs, see, I, I think that lineup works in the regular season, right? Like when you got, you got the Cubs and you got the Nationals and even like, you know, it, it's just it, guys don't bear down. But in October, I, I, I don't think we talk enough about it. Guys are bearing down. They're going with a plan each pitch by pitch. And you got to be more disciplined in October. Right. And every run counts. I mean, you watch these games right now. We had this conversation 
me and the boys last night watching the Indians and Yankees game, you have first and second, nobody out, and then you don't score. And because it's early in the game, uh, teams are thinking, oh, we're waiting for that big, you know, that big, that big inning. And, uh, and they're not playing for, you got to scratch out in the playoffs. You better scratch out at least one run out of a situation like that. Hopefully two, you know, if you run into something, yeah, then you, then you throw three or four up, but, uh, but the, you know, those pitchers are bearing down. They're pitching to minimize damage, right? So, um, but, but what you see is you come the seventh and eighth inning, sixth, seventh, eighth, and you're down by one and two runs. Well, I can rewind, rewind the tape, you know, back to the beginning of this game. And we've left multiple runs on the table. Um, and those, they kind of get forgotten and everybody focuses on what happened in the sixth, seventh and eighth. And they forgot that earlier in the game, we, we had an opportunity to chip away at this lead and force this pitcher to pitch instead of a three run lead. We're making him pitch with only a one run lead puts pressure on him, puts pressure on the pitcher, not to make a mistake over the middle of plate. It puts pressure on the defense. It's, it's, there's a multitude of factors that come into play when you're playing with a three, four run lead versus a one and two run lead. And that goes a long way. It's very important, but it just really gets, seems to get overlooked um, because everybody's playing for the big crooked number. And I know the analytic guys say that, you know, the statistics, you know, play out that uh, it's the big crooked number that wins the game. But I don't know. I've, I've played the game long enough and I just know that hanging around for a team, letting the team hang around, even if it's a team that's not even as talented, nearly as talented, if you let them hang around long enough, all it takes is one little, you know, a bad hop, a, an error, a, a wild pitch or something, just a little spark. And before you know it, you're down by two and you're chasing. But I mean, that was game one of the Mets series when the Phillies wasted the Wheeler outing because Wheeler was incredible right. and they let that team hang around. So by the time the bullpen comes in the eighth inning, they're scratching out runs. Yeah. And it forced, you know, that forces you at the end to have to, you know, offensively to have to, you know, go for the big, the big, the big inning. It's, it's, you know, I sound like, you know, I'm, I'm really showing my age now because I'm like, you know, when, back when I played and you start saying, you know, I, I swore I'd never say that, you know, when I, when I was playing, I heard you guys say that. But. <laughs> hey, real quick, one second. Uh, I just need <laughs> to thank our diehards. Uh, we love you guys. And uh, thank you for all the stuff that we do here at PHLY and being a part of it. Uh, the great David Segui with us. And uh, Seg, I know you, <laughs> you never wanted to do that, but do it. Yeah, but I got to do it. Like, I'm watching the game last night, and I wanted to throw my remote. We're looking at base running, like defense, um, the small little details. We have guys fly ball to the outfield, shallow, medium to shallow. And we have outfielders catching balls flat-footed when guys are tagging up, not moving, not getting behind it, not moving through it to stop the runner for advancing the extra bases. You watch Quan in left field. He does everything fundamentally sound. He did a really good job in late in the game. He got behind the ball and left, moved through it, and kept the runner from, you know, advancing bases. And then I just watch it consistently, just flat-footed outfielders, and guys are taking extra bases, and we're giving up runs on – on that's just simple fundament, fundamental baseball that just – in the base running, oh my gosh! Like, Oof. don't get me started on that. Uh, that Winker base running the other day—I I don't even know what that was. You watch the Yankee game, you get just ran themselves out of a, of a big inning. I just don't—I don't understand yeah, it. I don't know. Yeah, that make a chism, and then uh, what was the second one? Another one right behind him was it uh, Rizzo? I yeah, it was so. You know, just ran themselves out of, out of an inning. It, it, you just can't do that, especially at this time of the year. You just can't give away outs that easily. Um, I just wonder, like, are the fundamentals not being taught at the lower levels? Because that's just stuff that kids learned when they were, you know, 10, 12 years old. I just don't, you know, I don't know how these managers maintain their composure in the deck out watching, <laughs> watching that kind of stuff happen. It's just, you know, bring in relievers and they're bouncing balls six feet in front of the plate, you know, you know, that lefty for the Indians, that kid that, you know, young kid, obviously probably, you know, feeling some pressure, but I mean, what do you have? Three, three pass balls in one mm -hmm. inning, four, I don't you know. 
it was that's insane. It, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. So, what what do you do with a veteran club like the Phillies? Do you run it back? Do you change things up? Like, do you, Dombrowski talked about moving Schwarber out of the leadoff hole as a possibility because you know these are some big contracts. There's not a lot of maneuverability. Like, you have a, maybe the outfield. Maybe uh, you know that's where you can make some change. D- does change need to happen? Well, it, I mean, obviously the goal there is to win a, win a championship. They're not content just to get to the playoffs, and they're um, you know the fan base isn't content. The players aren't con- content. They they know that they have a championship ball club. They do have the they have the potential to win a World Series with the ball club they have. I just think a, a piece here and there. I'd, I'd I'd move Schwarber to the second spot and. I would get a traditional um, high on base percentage guy that has some speed and put him in the leadoff spot. Let somebody be on base ahead of Schwarber. Um, um, you know, I like it. I, I, I don't mind him in the in the leadoff hole, but you know, it gives him the extra at bat when it the lineup rolls around late in the game. But uh, I'd like to see him, you know, with with some base runners ahead of him more consistently, where you get you force the pitcher to have to come into the zone to him because you know when he when he when he get when he's hitting strikes swinging at strikes he's 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 incredible to watch he is and the only problem is is that like you saw the pitches that they were getting and, and you know and you also need to split up bryce and schwarber so you have that issue mm-hmm. uh and turner kind of kills him because turner really should be the guy Who's that yeah. age? You know, like he should be. He's actually a perfect leadoff hitter in that sense because he's got a little pop. He's got great speed, and he should he should be he should have a better approach. When they when they signed Turner, I thought that was going to be the piece that that uh, put them over the hump. I mean, that kid has all the talent to be a superstar. He ha- he's in- incredible speed. He's got pop. Um, he's aggressive on the base pads. He's a, you know, he has, he's a good base runner too. I don't know what's happened. I don't know if he's adjust, made adjustments in his swing. I don't know if it's a small ballpark. You know, he's feeling like he can hit more home runs. Um, I'd like to see him go more, more, more up the middle line drive approach. That, that ballpark's so small, you'll, you'll, you'll hit your home runs by mistake. Um, I'd like to see the guys, you know, change their approach a little bit less to lift and more to drive the ball through the gaps and they'll by mistake, you know, get extension, get extension and, and, and hit their home runs, but they'll sustain more rallies that way. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Turner, I and mean, that's a head scratcher to me. I don't know if it's, I don't know if there's a health injury, you know, health, health issues or injury issue there, or has he changed his approach? Because I thought I, I really, I, I really would have bet the farm that his addition to that lineup would have made the whole thing move. Do you? How about some of the young players? Like, what do you? You Bohm needs to to kind of you know he he tailed off. I still I believe in his ability, and he's usually a really good patient hitter, and he's got great play coverage. But man, I mean, he he was he lost himself, and he got very emotional. Like, what you you had some emotion in you. What do you do as a hitter to curtail some of that emotion? I like emotion. I, I, I needed emotion, but my emotion was anger. I like fueled off anger. Um, kind of the hockey player mentality. Um, I took that to the baseball field. Um, when I see emotion, the emotion of fear that I didn't, I don't know. If, I don't I'm sorry, but I don't know fear. I'm not, you know, playing the macho act, but, um, when I get, when it's time to compete, I grew up with brothers, so I don't like to lose. So the fear I had was losing. So, if I started to taste any, any, uh, failure, um, it made me angry and made me compete harder. Right. So in all honesty, you know, the problem I had was I'd show my ass on occasion with over, going over the top with the, uh, with the emotion, um, the competitiveness. Um, but I'd, I'd rather see that than these guys that, you look in their eyes and look like deer in the headlights. They don't want to be there. Like, I don't understand that mentality. 
when I coach guys, I tell them, look, if that's who you are, that's fine. Find a different profession, but and and, it, and get off the field because there's kids, there's kids grinding somewhere in AAA. There's kids grinding them. They would give their left, you know what, to be in that position um, and embrace that. They want to get out of the way and give it, let somebody else have that. Because if it's scary, go do something else. That's what I, that's what I say. But yeah, I, but he, I, I, you know, I did, I, I saw fear. Like you said, I saw fear and nervousness and, and in, in him, I, I do believe in him. I think Bone's a great uh, talent. I think he has the potential to be a very, very good uh, productive third baseman. I mean, I, I I thought Stott should have improved too. I mean, Stott Stott gave you some good at bats, but he just didn't develop during the season. Not like I kind of thought where he would be. Yeah, he I there's there's mechanical things in his swing that I think until they get addressed, he's going to have that inconsistency. Um, that's you know not to get into you know. That's getting into the mechanical part of getting the bat through the zone, right? Controlling the bat head through the zone. If you don't control the bat head long through the zone, you're gonna you're gonna be inconsistent. It's just that's just a that's just a reality. So I've seen that since he came up. He smoothed it out a little bit and has gotten better. He has improved, but there's still some things in there that that he could he could he could address. Um, you know, and that's that goes for every player, and that's the constant to have a long career. It's a, it's a game of adjustments and you're adjusting your swing sometimes daily. Um, that's what the off season's for is go back. You, and you have to be honest with yourself and assess what were my strengths? What were my weaknesses? If I was pitching to me, what would I, that's what I always ask myself. What would I throw? Where would I throw it? Right. That, and then, then that's how I worked in the off season, starting with the T and trying to, it's about plugging holes. I don't want holes in my swing. I don't want to rely on hitting I don't want to have to rely on my success being dictated by the pitcher making a mistake, right? I want to be able to hit from corner for a baseball off each side of the plate. That's, you know, when I hear p people say, oh, I tipped my cap and it was a strike. No, no, so <laughs> sorry. That's, you're not a competitor. If he threw a strike, I'm not tipping my cap. I might go down, but I'm, I'm going to go down swinging. I'm going to get, you know, it's like a fight. I'm not, I'm not going to get in a fight and never throw a punch, right? <laughs> I might get my ass kicked, but it's going to be clawing and scratching and kicking and punching, right? That's otherwise don't get in it. I, I, that's why he and I have always been friends. <laughs> I, I think. I mean, can he play? He's. I'm looking at his stats. He's. He should be the leadoff hitter for the Bills. 15 years, he bat 291. Let's check this out. 95, 500 plate appearances, 47 strikeouts. That's yeah. Like you never insane. struck out. His strikeout numbers are. 54 the next year 480 plate appearances he he should be the he should be the dh and lead off hitter for the phil's next year in. yeah the, pro, the pro, that's 47 broken helmets every time i struck out i did not like striking out uh, that's uh but that was a different it was a different game back then because we didn't get rewarded for striking out we didn't get it you now you know it's not really the player's fault they get rewarded for for hitting two two ten and hitting 30 home runs with 50 RBIs. They get rewarded for that. We didn't, you know, we got sent down or they found somebody else. There was only one or two guys in a lineup. There were the all or nothings, right? The, the Rob Deers, the, yeah. you know, you, you those kinds, those kinds of big, those, right. Yeah. Yeah. The Billy Ashley, those those big guys that you, you, you can have those guys in the lineup. You can't have six and eight of them in the lineup. You know, you, because you you know that guy's going to get hot and you can ride him for a week or two here and there, right? But you also know he's going to get cold and swing and miss a lot. But if you surround him with balanced hitters, then it's not, you know, it's, he doesn't really get exposed like you see it now, if that makes sense. So it's about balancing in a lineup. We look, go back to the Kansas City Royals World Series team, the that that run they had. They had speed, they had power, they had but but they had a guy a group of guys that put the ball in play and hit doubles. Give me a team of doubles hitters and we'll kick ass because those guys will, will that's what, that's how rallies are sustained. Doubles, doubles, doubles create havoc. If you're looking, shooting for doubles, you'll fill a lot of columns. You'll hit your home runs. You'll drive in your runs, your own base percentage, your average. If you're chasing home runs, you fill two gap, you two, two columns, strikeouts and home runs. That's what you fill. Yeah. It's I, historic. Go, you, you know what's funny? At, you said that and, 
I think back to the the last Phillies run, which is the 07 to 11 run, and that was Charlie's team, and it was Rollins and Victorino and Ryan that, Howard. I mean, Howard hit his his home runs, right? But but they that, would they would dagger you. Raul Banez was on that team on the team later on. Like they had doubles. They 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 went at, they went after you. They they were relentless. That's a balanced ball club that Polanco? there's no way to pitch. Polanco, you, uh, Utley. Uh, yeah, you, Chase. I forgot Chase, yeah. You you can't, you cannot navigate. There's no, you can't t- take a breath navigating through that lineup because they're going to, they're going to pick you to death. They're going to find a way to beat you that day, whatever they have that day to beat you. It's like a, it's a, it's, it's a knife fight. It's, you know, it's a knife fight. You're, you're going to get cut in a knife fight. It's going to hurt. Right. Um, that's what it was like. And you, and you had your guys from top to bottom that they ran the bases hard. They, and what I liked about them, even the big boppers, they had the ability when the game dictated it to shorten it up and adjust their swing to the game situation. They didn't, they didn't continue to just sell out to the home run, home run, home run, home run. And, um, Man, that that was a great, great team. They want to they want to model a team, start mod- modeling the team off of that type of balanced lineup. And of course, it's not easy to go find your Jimmy right. Rollins right out of the, you know, you, you know the Utleys, those guys, you know the Howards, those, you know those guys are. But you got to start. Like you have, you got Bryce, you got Schwarber, you got Turner, right? Like you you got. It's not like they don't have talent, right? Big, they have a huge payroll. I mean. You know, I mean, the problem is they, they just became easy to navigate the deeper you went in that lineup. I mean, once you were after Castellanos, Castellanos is a good year. Once you got after Castellanos, it was it was kind of easy to yeah. get him out. Plus, yeah, out. I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love to to be able to sit in on the hitters meetings and see just see what the approach is. What the what's the conversation? You know, what's what's that sound like? Um, because a lot. A lot of it fact that that factors into it. Like, what what is it we're trying to do? How are we trying to execute against this specific pitcher this day? Uh, I'd love to hear what's being, you know, shared there because there just seemed to be a lack of of direction um, when it came to the approach. Now, is that happening in the locker room or is that from the on deck circle to the plate where you've given them the information? We have a good game plan, but for whatever reason between you know that that 60 70 foot walk between the on deck circle to the plate you know everything's forgotten um and that and i've seen that happen a million times i mean we've all as hitters had that happen you know all it takes is one pitch or one getting fooled by one pitch and then we you know that's what young hitters do you abandon your game plan and try to create a new one out of panic that never works um you set the game plan based off of, you know, the information that's in front of you, and they have an abundance of information nowadays. So there's no excuse for not being prepared um, on that side of it. And you know, we're, we're and talking about this team and, and change. I, I didn't think that they should change the manager. I, I I didn't think that that Rob Thompson was at fault. I mean, I, I don't know what you're gonna what you expect. I mean, he's got a really good demeanor. Right? I mean, I, I don't know. People are complaining that he didn't use Wheeler in relief. I wouldn't have done that either. I would have kept him for game five. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think Thompson has a good demeanor for this club. I mean, he's won a lot of games in the last three years. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know him personally. I've you know, I've seen him for years in the dugout, and he does. He has a calm uh, demeanor. He doesn't uh, – he doesn't – surely on, doesn't panic – to the naked eye and maybe inside maybe inside things are of course he's human but uh yeah he he seems to be on an even keel even base he makes he doesn't make rash doesn't seem to make rash panicked decisions um in this in the course of the games um so i mean i don't know how you can fault the manager and truthfully i mean it, it, at the end of the day you know i played for a lot of bad managers i played for some good managers i played for um you know, at the end of the day, the manager has very little, at least when I played, maybe now they do because they have their hands in every move, but um, 
the it's, it falls on the on the shoulders of the players that the players have to execute. I played for some really bad managers and we played well. And so, and sometimes it's in spite of the guy leading the team, right? Um, you know, you can, you can overmanage nowadays, yeah. um, tamper, put, get your hand in. I see a lot of that going on, but, uh, um, a lot of coming good for commercials though. There's a commercial on every 30 seconds with pitching changes, but, um, the, uh, yeah, I don't think you, it's very hard when managers get fired. That's just an, that's just a, uh, an owner's or a GM's way of trying to shake up the team. You can't fire all the players. Um, so they fire the manager, unfortunately. Um, you know, that's part of the gig when you get hired as a manager. You know, at some, bo- at some point you're going to get fired. So that's more reason why I, under- I don't understand why these guys follow these crazy um, game plans that are sent down from upstairs. Like, if I'm going to get fired eventually, I'm getting fired doing it my way. Yeah. And if you want to fire me yeah. now... I'm going to yeah. then fire me now, but I'm going to do it my way so I can sleep at night um, knowing that I, I tried to do it my way, not not the way somebody else told me that, uh, you know, doesn't have the baseball experience that they do. So it's just the nature of the game now. But, uh, yeah, he's firing him doesn't seem like the solution to me, but I'm not, you know, I'm not inside the clubhouse. So. Yeah. It's hard for no, me to say. I, I, and, and, you know, clearly Dave Dombrowski felt the same way. Like, you know, listen. This is a, this is a player's thing. This is an uh, an architect thing that they're going to have to you know kind of fix to get through. Because it also they also felt tight, like they were trying all the talk about the World Series. Like people were talking about the World Series in April and May, and then the playoffs get here, and man, it's like all right, well you got to have a long run. And the last thing you need to be thinking about. It is like a long run in the in October. Yeah, when you put together a team like that, you've had success the last few years. The, the expectations are going to be high. Um, that's you know that's understandable. The uh, you know and you have to look at it too. That like their season wasn't a failure. They they got into the postseason. You know they got beat. That happens. There's only one team's going to be left standing. Yeah. Um, when you ex- but when you put high levels of ex- expectation on yourself and your team, you know, much like the Yankees in their day, um, you know, if they if they didn't win the World Series, it was to them a a failure. Uh, but at the same time, you have to, you know, there's a lot of teams that would love to have been had the season the Phillies had, love to to have gotten as deep as the Phillies did in, you know, into the postseason, and they would they wouldn't consider it a failure. But when you when you put together teams like this and you have the success that they've had, of course, the, the expectations are going to be very high and maybe sometimes unreasonable, but that's, you know, that's, that's the sports business. That's I'd rather yeah. be in that position than that. I'd be, I'd rather be in that position than be on, be on a team where they're, you're, you know, you're expected to finish last. And if you finish second to last, you feel like, you know, you feel like you did something. That's, you know, that's not, that's not good. Yeah. All right, last thing I I, I got to ask because we're talking hitting, and you were talking about managers. T- give us a Charlie. How would Charlie handle when, when you were playing for him? How did he handle a slump, or how did well you you had your hitting meetings? What was he like? Charlie was great. Um, he was as a manager, and this is pretty actually unheard of. Um, he would talk hitting with you during the game. You know, you'd be on in the hole, leaning up on the on the rail, and he'd be sitting there, you know, talking about approach with this guy. Hey, you know, this guy has been doing doing this, doing that. He lost his side of the plate. You know, you can cut this part of the plate. He's talking like a hitter that's actually in the game playing as the manager. And you, I mean, you, I could find you a million probably videos and photos of him and Jimmy, him and Jim, Tommy, you know, shoulder to shoulder in the middle of a game they're talking hitting they're talking game plan they're talking about what what pitch to sit on what what this guy's gonna throw i loved that we didn't need a stat sheet we didn't need a we didn't need a tendency sheet spit out by a computer we're watching the dude right we're watching the dude that's that's how you the game's played and you know if you had a bat at bat he didn't encourage you sometimes he you know charlie's wit or humor he'd crack some joke about you know how how bad you suck right now or something <laughs> and sometimes that's what and me that's what you needed sometimes that was his way of kicking you in the pants without 
without it being a negative, right? Make yeah. you laugh, make you laugh about it. And because he, you know, he never forgot how hard hitting was, but he, but he also had a passion for the hit science of hitting. So he would sit around all, after a game and talk hitting as long as you wanted. There's nights I'd be there, you know, because I'd lift after the game and then come in the clubs on wine and sit around and talk baseball. There'd be nights, that, I mean, he'd sit there till one, one in the morning talking, talking baseball, talking hitting, talking situations. And that's where guys learn the game. That's where you learn the game. That's what we learned the game is those conversations sitting over a, some guys having some beers and watching sports center and and just shoot and just bouncing baseball off each other right that's the, and then it, and it bonds the teams bond and get close that way that's awesome that's awesome that's such a great story my brother great stuff as always man i i love when you tell Thanks, those good. stories you can talk about hitting and and it's it's funny you were a great disciple charlie loves you and uh he always said that you were you nobody knew hitting like you did yeah he's a good man man i miss i miss hanging out with him a lot so hopefully he's hopefully he's doing well i i get to well we're gonna get you here him. like when you come back to when you come to philly because david's involved in chandler bats when you come to philly well, we'll make authentic authentic bat authentic bats with david chandler yeah there you go yeah, it's a it's bats. a different company it's a different company now it's a whole long story go ahead <laughs> Well, when you come here, I'll make sure that we get Charlie and we'll have a whole hitting session. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah, that's great. Brother, thanks, man. Good luck against the mountain. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks. He runs I need the encouragement more. today. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Take All care, right, guys. See you, buddy. See you. Thanks, pal. All right. Uh, now let's take a look at. Today's game, the series in the NLCS moves to New York. Dodgers and Mets, don't forget, October Magic, the MLB playoffs, presented by Ace Hardware Home Services. Uh, you got jobs around the house. You got things you got to get done. AceHardwareHomeServices.com. Uh, Ace, always the helpful place. All right, today, you got Severino for the Mets, Walker Bueller for the Dodgers, as the as the series shifts to New York, I I got to tell you, I, I do think there's runs tonight. Uh, talking about with Brad, um, how it will be. Uh, I do think that you know Severino should be uh, a good matchup for the Dodgers left-handed hitters with Otani and Freeman and Max Muncy. So you can see that and Bueller struggled, right? So uh, it'll be interesting to see the Mets at home. Where they have talk about magic, man. It's all been about the magical Mets as they're trying to get uh, what looks to be a subway series. Yankees last night take care of business against Cleveland. They're up 2 0 in that series. As uh, again, it, that Cleveland lineup, just not very good, not very deep. They had chances, they had the bases loaded a couple times, couldn't get a run home, and that's a death knell to them. Because they, the only way that they got to win is they got to be tied or up going into the six, seven, eight, nine, where they can deploy their bullpen, which is such a big weapon. So we'll see that. That'll be game three tomorrow night from Cleveland. This is the MLB playoffs October Magic presented by Ace Hardware Home Services. <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor. 